Make his jewelry now. Stop putting on his money. No, I, 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 can't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make by next Monday, man. It's not. Listen, watch out. Relax. Relax. Hey, I know, Kemp. I always wanted to kind of be on Pimp My Ride. I don't know why. I don't know why. Watch Eli. Eli, relax. Eli, relax. Put it in the Discord. We can get to it. We get to it, my boy. Bunny, what's the word? Bro, I wanted to be on Pimp My Ride until I realized they was really people's cause, bro. That game was ass. That game was so trash, bro. Got a new Discord? Yeah, the community made it. You're carless. It's not true. The game was so ass. Oh, my God. That game was so ass, bro. What the? I don't even know where to start with this one. Come on. Let's go get her. What's going down? Marcia, I'm here to pimp your ride, homegirl. Yeah! I knew it! Oh my god, my ride's gonna get pimped! What? Okay, you got business cards, bathing suits, a printer. What is it that you do again? Well, I'm a swimsuit model and I go to school for fashion design. So I've got everything I need right here. <laughs> right! Marcia, you remember your old ride, right? Man, it was finished. But not anymore. Take a look at your brand new ride. That's my car, that's my car, oh my God. <laughs> Come on, let's check it out. Man, check out the ice. That's 18 inches of platinum and set with real diamonds. What? Just be careful where you park, sweetheart. So what about the other pimp? Marcia, there's custom paint work and then there's our work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a custom paint job. You're gonna be turning heads all over Pimp City, girl. Oh, what? Damn. You said I found out Pimp My Ride was fake a few months ago? What, 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 what the f*** you mean by that? Don't ruin my childhood. Relax. A few minutes later. All right, bro, let's watch the video, bro. Y'all finna get ready to ruin the content, bro. 80% of Pimp My Ride was fake. Here's the evidence. Oh, God. God. Not my house, it's a stage house. And the contestants' houses weren't the only thing Pimp My Ride lied about. The reactions were staged and retaken multiple times. Certain upgrades were taken off as soon as the cameras cut. It's for a bu Hey, I can't upload videos in their shared drive link. You can't? Located by the producers as she was actually a 25-year-old cocktail waitress planning to move back to New York. The reason for this, as explained by Jake from season three, was because Pimp My Ride only picked people in their early 20s. There was a strict age limit of 22 years old. Confirming that the show was lying about contestants' details before filming had even started. In the first 30 seconds of each episode, Exhibit emphasizes that each contestant doesn't know they're about to get picked. He has no idea. I'm about to pimp his ride. Yet this was strange as the contestant always answer the door, always had a microphone on them, and even had their windows blacked out as if they didn't want cameras seeing inside. Well, it turns out Brooke, the supposed 22-year-old film lover, had been pre-selected by a friend to appear on the show, and as a result she'd state, when Exhibit showed up at my house, to tell me I'd been chosen, not a surprise. What was a su- Is this video loud as y'all? Let me down some. The prize was when the producers made me react and react and then react again to Exhibit showing up, finally co- you so gullible. I'm sorry that when I was a kid, I didn't believe that these shows were fake. You didn't peep in this. You a mother live. You thought this is a kid. You lying. You lying like this is a liar, y'all. Worsing me into doing a cartwheel, and she wasn't the only contestant who'd had this experience. And they coach you on how to say it, and what to say, and everything like that. The show didn't have an actual script, but they did steer the dialogue in a direction that they wanted. If I said something they liked, they would have me repeat it over and over on camera. Oh this had been commented by Seth, who appeared in season 5, who was also well aware that Exhibit was coming to his house, stating, They told me I was in the running for my own episode, but it was between me and two other people. When I was sitting in the house waiting, for a knock at the door, they said that it was either going to be Exhibit or a producer telling me I didn't win. Thinking back on it, that was all bullshit, but it did make the surprise genuine, which was the same experience as Erin from Season 4, Episode 2. She was one of three contestants. One of them would be chosen. Someone came and knocked at the door. If it was Exhibit... I hope they ain't pimped that car. That bitch's ass. 
they want. Each contestant was at least somewhat aware that they'd be getting a knock on the door because, well, the homes they were in were actually owned by Pimp My Ride. A Huffington Post article clarified, these houses were oftentimes not the contestants' homes. Instead, each dwelling had been rented by MTV. For example, when Jake from season three was asked, did the film crew show up and stage the whole surprise as part of the episode? He'd respond by stating, it wasn't my house. It was a place owned by one of the crew members. <laughs> Similarly, Seth from season five stated, the house was rented from Craigslist because I lived in an apartment and they need a house with a big open driveway for filming, which is certainly reasonable, although sometimes the house was part of the person's story. In season two, for example, Eric's car had supposedly been beat up in the rough streets of Compton. In Compton, ain't no street lights in Compton. <laughs> However, judging from a quick look at Google Maps, it seems the episode was filmed in a much nicer neighborhood. You f bastard. So if Eric's story was inconsistent and Brooke's story from earlier was downright fabricated, then who else's stories were exaggerated for the sake of the show? Well, it seems pretty much all of them. In season three, Jake's Buick had been bought from his grandma who smoked, and as a result, the show threw an extra few dozen cigarette butts in the car oh to make her just look like a totally disgusting person. On top of this, the show interviewed Jake's girlfriend toward the start of the episode, yet MTV apparently questioned me having a girlfriend and suggested I dump her because it was better for my desperate dude with a shit car image. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you get Nah, get rid of her, get rid of her. <laughs> hey bro! What the f a producer later responded by stating, why would we want a kid to break up with his girlfriend? How would that have helped the show? So while Jake's claim about his girlfriend was somewhat questionable, the cigarette store story was confirmed by Seth, who had a similar experience. I know I'm fat, but they went the extra mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor just in case I got hungry. However, it seems the fakest story was Justin's in season six. His front bumper had supposedly fallen off in a car crash. Here is a result of a three car pile of right here. Although according to a 2010 tweet, my friend Justin was on Pimp My Ride. On TV, he said his RAV4 was involved in a three car crash. No, it wasn't. Dude beat his car up with a bat. Oh, that mother crazy. The same user then clarified, what he told me was that MTV suggested to him that he and his friend should do more damage to the car, which was confirmed by Justin oh! himself, who'd add, yes, they removed my front bumper, used aircraft remover, and enhanced the dent on the side of my car. Whilst introducing the episode, I thought he hit it because he was mad. But they made do like insurance fraud. Justin stated, One of my crazy ex-girlfriends actually threw nail polish on my hood. Although when he was asked, why are all your ex-girlfriends so angry? Justin revealed it was just something I made up. While Aaron from season four. Hold on, read the rest. Except the last one, she cheated on me. Oh damn, I'm sorry, bro. Ex-girlfriend so angry, Justin revealed it was just something I made up. While Aaron from season four was also encouraged to make her car look bad. They asked to leave trash in the car. We went to in and out and so they told me to leave it in the cup holder, so I did. It seems the only real part of the show's intro was Exhibit's improvised dialogue. Because it wasn't scripted. I could say whatever I wanted want to say. And when Exhibit drove the car to the shop. Exhibit did actually take the cars and drive them away with the exception of a few that were too broken down. And then they made it look like he did. Although this segment created even more problems. Most people believe that PMR takes the car and gives it back in like a week or something. That's what I thought was gonna happen too. But in actuality, they took my car for roughly seven months, oh being God. a massive inconvenience for Damn. some of the show's contestants. And they make it look like they're moving really, really fast, but in reality, they weren't. When asked for the five months they had your car, did they supply you with a replacement car? Justin from season six replied, no, they gave me $2,000 to rent a car. But I was 19 at the time. I rented a car for a month and it cost me $1,000, forcing Justin to find his own transport for the remaining four months. Damn. Seth from season five had a similar experience, being forced to go to a really small shady company off the freeway by LAX because they were the only ones willing to rent to me because of my age. It sucked having that rental car because they wouldn't take payments over the phone, so once a month I had to drive all the way from West Covina to LAX just for them to swipe my card. Although the rental situation was better for other contestants. They had my car for about six months, and that time I had the rental car for six months as well. With Jake from season three adding, they gave me a really nice Mitsubishi Lancer to drive for the time they had the Buick. In the meantime, the crew began to plan how the rides were going to be pimped, although according to a former production staffer, this was also somewhat staged. The boardroom scenes with the WCC 
DC crew took a long time to shoot. They often had to be fed line by line. Some of those guys never really got used to being on TV. Some of the lines in the mm. shop probably seem rehearsed because producers would come up with them and feed them to the WCC guys, although excluding this. So when I seen somebody in the chat, somebody in the chat was like, damn, this is cringe. The producers was telling them to say it, bro. Yes, the mechanics were fairly innocent. The segment where they'd pimp the car was almost impossible to fake. They really did put shit in the vehicles and change everything out. But when contestants were shown what their new car looked like, Pimp My Ride employed even more staging. Finally came the day for the big reveal. They filmed my reaction to the car at least 10 times before I'd even seen it. Oh and when I did, God, holy hell, fuck? poor Betsy looked like Barbie's dream car from hell. It was Pimp to the Nines and Hideous. <laughs> this had been written by Bro. Bro! They made them do like fake reactions. So once they seen it, and if you reveal the coin, you'd be like, what the fuck? Oh, no, we don't like that one. Go and get the fake shit. Oh, they, they were pieces of shit. Who gave a much different reaction during her episode. Beautiful, perfect color. Exactly, exactly the color I want. While every other contestant also filmed. Oh my God, that was pimped. The episode. Beautiful, perfect color. Exactly, exactly the color I want. While every other contestant. That's the fucking call we've been looking at. It's, it's hideous. It's hideous. Stint also filmed their reveal multiple different times. We had to take a lot of takes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Justin stated they had to keep retaking my reaction. Seth stated I even had to do the reveal of the car like three times. However, Jake's reaction anecdote was the strangest of them all. His first real reaction to the car was just quiet amazement where he said this is good. They immediately yelled redo and then things got a bit weirder. I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more enthusiastic, although it would have been hard to conjure enthusiasm for a car that barely worked, as Jake would later write. The problem with the show is they don't fix any of the mechanical issues and my car was a piece of shit. What they did was make my- What the fuck? They don't even fix the mechanical issues piece of shit sound exceptionally awesome, which is great, just not great enough to drive on roads. The HuffPost article expanded on this by stating, the car needed a muffler, and so a fake exhaust pipe was installed to make it seem as if that's what the car was supposed to sound like, even though it was just a lack of a muffler, while Exhibit brought up what a much more dangerous fuck? incident. There was an instance where one of the cars wasn't fixed correctly, and long story short, this kid was driving this vehicle that was supposed to be like damn near brand new, and the steering wheel came off when he what? was driving it. It's therefore for no surprise that the production staff has said, I can say that the cars often weren't fully ready when we shot the reveal. Some had to stay in the shop another week or so to get finished before the kids got them back, especially if they had mechanical issues, and it was Seth and his candy bars who seemed to fit this category. Pimurai doubled down on his supposedly crappy diet by installing- Oh, they gave a big nigga cotton candy, bro. They gave a big nigga cotton candy. A cotton candy machine in the boot of the car, which didn't even work as the cotton candy machine didn't have a protective hood that fit. So if I tried turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. Seth also never used the LED lights installed in the seats as they would get really hot if left on, while he also had to remove the gullwing doors because the pistons used to lift them kept them from putting seatbelts in the back, which was highly dangerous. To add a cherry on top of the cake, he had to fork out a further $1,700 for a brand new engine then adding after that I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it MTV fuck you you had all them viewers tricked into thinking they was pimping cars for real how desperate do you have to be to make a fake ass show for the views and the money makes you wonder what else MTV lied about trace o thug tears this is fucking nuts it. However, the end to Justin's RAV4 was even more brutal. After five years of taking his pimped out ride to car shows, Justin's RAV4 caught on fire whilst driving as a result of faulty wires. It was later confirmed that this had nothing to do with the show, and at least Justin's car was the same one he first sent in, as when Tavrish uploaded a video titled I Bought an Abandoned Pimp My Ride Minivan, he'd make a shocking discovery. The show originally introduced the minivan as a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager, however Tavrish discovered the car was now a 1999 Dodge Caravan, showing that after they wrecked the original minivan, Natalia the show Black snake fist just resubscribed for 16 months. 
Yo, uh, Blackfish, appreciate you for the sub. Thank you. Welcome to the community. Oh, wait, no. It's 16 months. I'm sorry. Quickly pimped a completely different car. As a result, Exhibit has been the brunt of most of the show's backlash. I was the face of the show. You know what I'm saying? So people associate me with what happened to the car. Which feels pretty oh unfair given God. every contestant has said he's an awesome guy. In fact, Exhibit only did pimp my ride for the following reason. I actually did pimp my ride because I thought they was going to play my music videos. However, it instead seemed to have the opposite of- They ain't play none of that nigga shit. Oh, no! All they gave that nigga was a concentrate joke, bro. I ain't never seen no motherfucking exhibit in that shit. Fact. The show was taking away my credibility wow. of what I've already done. It was taking so much time. I wasn't able to tour. I wasn't able to record albums. Oh, damn. I definitely I, didn't know. I was, you know, I was there filming, 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 filming. Which is even more depressing given he was barely paid for it. But at that particular what? time, you wasn't really happy with the pay though. Nah. <laughs> and as a result, it's no surprise that Pimp My Ride is unlikely to make a comeback. When are we going to get a Pimp no, My Ride? No, no, there'll be no more Pimp My Ride. Oh, my childhood was a lie. I'm devastated. Those bastards. <laughs> my bad. Oh, absolutely not, bro. 